today I want to go over a, a quick tutorial in Rhino uh, using the tween curve command. The tween curve command. The tween curve command is a command that allows you to take two control curves that you define, two control curves that you define, and then it allows you to generate a series of curves that exist between those two curves, hence the name tween curve. It's sort of a uh, variation on the um, blended uh, tool command within a uh, blended blended component command within Illustrator. And you can do both tween shapes and tween curves in Rhino, and it's a very useful tool for generating uh, linear patterns, uh, some really beautiful linear patterns that can be used in the uh, laser engraving process. And we're going to go over that uh, in this tutorial. Okay, we're going to begin our uh, tutorial using the uh, tween curve command in Rhino to build blended curves that can be used for laser engraving. Okay, and we're going to explore two conditions. The first condition that we're going to explore, we're going to explore a tween between closed curve segments, and then we're going to explore uh, a, uh, another situation where we're using open curves, where we have two open curves and we create a tween between those. Uh, these curves were drawn using our um, CV tool, our control point curve tool right here, and the other ones were drawn using our, our rectilinear tool and our uh, ellipse tool uh, there. And so any way that you can generate curves within Rhino, you can use that to create your curves. So let's go back. And we're going to look at our open curves. We're going to start out with our open, with our um, closed curves. My bad. And the way that the command works is that you click on the first curve, you click on click on the second curve, and then you type in your command tween curve. Okay. And that will generally, it, when you first use it, it defaults to one. Okay, and so if we were to change this value to 1 and hit enter, change this value to 1 and hit enter, we get a single curve between our uh, two objects. And, and that's basically how it works. It's what it does. Um, but if you increase that value, so if we change the number to 30, you get a nicer transition between the two curves. Now you can click on this control point which sort of reverses the direction of the tweening operation uh, and you can usually click on this to get what you want. Note that these two points represent uh, the uh, point where the curves begin. So if I were to go back, uh, I'm going to escape out of this command and I'm going to select this curve and I'm going to rotate it slightly from the center like that and select that and if I then go over here and grab my tween curve command again you notice that I get a nicer transition here but I lose that sort of twist that I like there so I'm going to escape out of this select this and I'm going to rotate it again um, and rotate it back so I get that sort of like twisting motion in the curve between the two curves. And so I select that and I'll come over here and you can get your tween curve command also from your curve menu coming down here to tween curve and it'll execute the command there like so. Okay. And uh, usually a match method refit works very well for uh, the purpose that we're doing. Uh, and then once we've done that, we can then go and select these two curves, and using our tween curve command, we can get a nice transition between those two. So you can do it through uh, multiple, multiple um, shapes if you if if you like. Um, another thing that we can do, another way that this can be um, utilized, uh, and I'm going to go back here, and what I'm going to do is that. I'm going to turn on my record history here. Uh, and then when I turn on my record history, what I can do once I select my 
tween curves like so, they become and run my tween curve command. I get the, the tween between those. And now if I then go, and I'm going to accept that, but now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn my um, points on. So I have my control points for my curves turned on. And I can take my control points and I can move those. And you notice that the curves update to that new point information. So you can use your CVs to shape your curves. And when we do our single point curve, you'll see how this becomes a, a very useful tool for adjusting your shape. And then once we do that, um, I can then select, turn my points off, select my curves, run my tween curve command between those two, and on and on it goes. So it's, it's really uh, nice dynamic things uh, that you can do uh, if once you record history and continue to sort of use these uh, tween curves. Now those are the tween command, tween curve command with uh, closed curves. I'm going to turn those off for right now. And I'm going to open up my open curves. And I'm going to select this curve. I'm going to select this curve. Wait, let me turn on my record history first because I want to take advantage of that with these. I'm going to select this curve first. And notice that it loops around like that. And this one loops around like that. Uh, I'm going to select those two, and I'm going to do a tween curve between those, and I get uh, this type of um, operation uh, between my um, two curves. And I can go back and hit my refit point, and now I get a much more fluid expression of those uh, two curves. And I'm going to um, accept that, and now I'm going to go back, and I'm going to turn my points on once again. And once I've done that, I can go in and by manipulating my control point curves, I can really shape uh, the dynamics of the interactions of, of the curves within the composition, uh, within the composition. And by doing this, you know, you can create uh, your compositions that represents uh, the, uh, the the field uh, for my um, uh, laser bed, and I can crop this so that uh, I activate the parts of uh, my, my, my canvas that I want to uh, activate. But it's a wonderful way of creating um, linear compositions using um, blended lines that are that are useful and and that are good. Uh, within laser engraving operations. And uh, with the history turned on, you can have a lot of fun and play around with these and dial it in to you get it to do exactly what it is that you want to do before you uh, engrave it into your materials. And it's something that you'll have to play around with, experiment with, uh, draw with. Uh, but it, as I said before, it's a wonderful way of generating uh, engraved uh, linear blended line compositions within Rhino. There's a similar workflow that you can do in Illustrator using your blend tool and that'll be the subject of a later tutorial.